All right, so tip number one is a good quality dovetail saw. And a dovetail saw is filed for a rip cut. You want something with a minimal set to it. So this particular saw has a two thousandth set to the tooth. So one tooth is bent two thousandths one way, the other tooth is bent two thousandths the other. What's the name brand of this saw you're using? This here? is a Rob Cosman saw. The unique thing about this saw is it has a graduated TPI, uh, teeth per inch. Mm -hmm. So the first two inches of this saw has 22 teeth per inch. The rest is 15. A uh, nice brass rigid back and a good weighted handle. This is a Veritas. It uh, doesn't have the graduated tooth pattern, so it's only 14 TPI. Uh, very good quality saw for the money. So what are the, what's the cost, versus one versus the other? Well, you're looking at about average 250 here uh, and about $80 here. Okay, so there's quite a bit of difference there. Big difference. So how much difference does that um, initial tooth, the finer tooth count make uh, getting your cut started? Especially starting out, um, having that finer tooth makes getting the saw started much easier. Mm -hmm. um, once you get accustomed to it, it's not that big of a deal. Um, being able to start a 14 TPI saw is just fine. Okay. Yeah. One other saw would be a good quality fret saw. Fret, also called coping saw maybe? Uh, it's similar to a coping saw, but instead of using the coping saw blades, it uses scroll saw blades. Oh, okay. So very, very, very fine. small, mm -hmm. fine tooth blade. Um, it allows you to get in the kerf that the saw makes. Um, and what's nice about this particular one is you can add uh, tension in two places so you can get a nice tensioned blade on there. So where are you putting the tension at? Here uh, and Yeah, so you're loosening this uh, when you put the blade in, when you add, when you tighten that back down, this draws in and it adds tension to that blade. If you like that tip, we've got nine more awesome tips for you. This is Mr. Shea McGee from Woodcraft here in the north side of Houston, the North Store. I don't know if you have an official name for it. Uh, Houston North. Houston North. So if you're ever in the area, stop by and see them. They have everything you need for woodworking. We're going to jump into tip number two. Tip number two, in my opinion, are a good quality bevel edge chisel. And what I mean by bevel edge is the side of the chisel tapers down to just a very small flat on the side. Mm. So it really allows you to get into the corners when you're removing the waste on the tailboard. Good quality steel, take the time to flatten the backs. You need equipment to maintain that edge. Sharpening stones and a good honing guide for me. Tip number three are uh, reliable layout tools. Uh, and then you can see here that I've got several things. What are the required tools for layout on a dovetail? Um, well, to me, the most important are the marking gauge, a dovetail marker, and a set of dividers. Uh, what brands do you have here? What do you like using or what do you recommend for especially somebody starting out? Well, on the dovetail marker, uh, this is a Veritas. It is a one in six ratio. For the angle, it's about 10 degrees. What I recommend more than anything is getting a dovetail marker that allows you to mark square across the top of the board mm -hmm. and then mark that angle for the dovetail without having to move anything. Gotcha. So this does one mark and you're done. Keeps the human error out of it. Absolutely. And then this is a pinnacle square. double square, four inch double square. A square is only useful if it's square. That's so, right. <laughs> uh, get a good quality one. And then the marking gauge here is a Veritas dual marking gauge. Um, so it allows, if you were doing any kind of mortise and tenon work, mm -hmm. you can put the offset there nice. and mark one or the other. In the case of dovetails, you're only using one of those. Okay. And that is this one with the flat side up. This is probably one of the most important layout tools I can use. <laughs> Painter's tape? Painter's tape. Uh, and it's used for two purposes. One, we actually put several layers on the back of the tailboard, mm -hmm. use the marking gauge to cut that off, and it allows a little fence for it to ride on the pin board when you're marking your pins. And then the other is I put it on the marking gauge line in front, you've got a clear line to saw to. Uh, especially on some of the darker woods where the marking gauge line's hard to yeah. see. Tip number four. You need to have a good stance. Um, I'm a lefty, so I keep my right foot forward. Uh, the goal is to keep your arm in a straight line all the way through the cut. What does that do? It makes your sawing more accurate. Uh, if you were to knock your elbow out a little bit, that just throws an error into the equation. Then so keeping a nice, smooth, straight line is what you're aiming for. And it keeps your dovetails to fit nice and tight. 
that's right having gaps and that's right well that's the goal yeah. for sure <laughs> another thing with stance a, a slight bend to the knee uh, and then just relax don't stiffen up on your stance and this is the case for both sawing and chiseling so with chiseling i'm at a fairly low bench um, and I'd prefer to preserve my back yeah. and not have to bend over all the time. Uh, so instead of going to a higher work surface or something, I usually just spread my legs to lower myself and then I'm comfortable at chiseling. This one is a light grip and you'd be amazed at how important this is. So most people, I teach the hand cut dovetail class here at the store. Most people, when they first start sawing, the first thing they want to do is get a death grip on this thing. Um, you want to avoid that. I liken it to the pressure you would use to hold a baby's hand, right? So very yeah. little. Just let the saw do the cutting. That's why the rigid, heavy back saw is a good one to use. This tip is just developing muscle memory. When I first started cutting dovetails, it was fairly easy for me to cut square across the top. Mm -hmm. What was difficult for me was cutting plumb straight up and down. Yeah. Where I actually got consistent at it was I kind of had to overcorrect what I felt was square. And I would just spend a lot of time in the shop yeah. laying lines out with a square and trying to cut square to that line. That goes with anything. Practice, yeah. practice. Listen, we're talking about practice. Absolutely. Practice. So yeah, that's what I've if got. If you're only doing practice. it once every two months, you're not going to get better at it. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and taking the time to actually lay things out. I think the layout, is you think the layout's the most important part, getting that right? It, it certainly helps. Like, if it doesn't start out right, you're, you're screwed. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And the goal here is to put the tailboard with the pin board without having to pair anything. Now that's, for me at least, it's yeah. not always possible. Um, sometimes I do have to pair things to fit, but the goal is to try to knock the joint together in one go. Uh, keeping your workpiece plumb. So I do this every time I put the workpiece up here to start sawing. I've ensured that this bench is level mm -hmm. and I just go through and get it square. So right. I would have never thought that that, as someone who's never done it before, I would never have thought that needed to be right. square. Yeah, I out. didn't either at first. Uh, and then, yeah, so you're just taking all the variables out of the equation. Right and letting the saw do the work. Number eight is, I refer to it as the offset method. So it's actually once you have cut the tailboard, you're leaving the waist in place and you're using something with the same thickness as the kerf of the blade to offset the tailboard in one direction using a marking knife with actually saw teeth on it. It's a really great method of doing it. So you'll offset the board one way, mark it, offset it the other way and mark it. Doing that method, all you have to worry about from that point, when you're cutting the tails, cutting square across the top, and then when you're cutting the pins, cutting square down the face. That's all you have to worry about. If your angle's off a little bit, that's okay, because you're marking the pin board directly from the tail board. Sawing right to your gauge line. Again, I use a marking gauge to mark the thickness of my board all the way around the tail board. When I saw the tails, and the pins for that matter, I want to stop just short of that gauge line. So you don't go, you're not going all the way to the line. You're going to get just short. Uh, that way, when you clear the waste, it makes cleaning up those corners easier. Yeah. The last one is a chiseling tip. When you're removing the waste, you'll use a fret saw to get the bulk of the material out, but you're left with a little bit of meat above the gauge line. You got to remove that material. If there's too much above the gauge line, you want to relieve it first ahead of the gauge line with just a, a nice wrap of the chisel, and then you can directly put your chisel in the gauge line. If you had too much ahead of the gauge line and you put the chisel directly in it mm -hmm. and started to chisel it with a mallet. It take too much? Well, no, it's gonna, you know, it's a wedge. Oh, okay. So it's gonna push past your gauge line. And the whole goal is to preserve that gauge line. You want a nice straight gauge line. All right, so that's 10 tips on how to cut better hand cut dovetails. But if you're in the Houston area, you can come see Mr. Shea. Uh, he is here at Woodcraft North in Houston. He does the hand cut dovetail classes here. Tell them how to get in touch with you on that class. Uh, you can go to our store's webpage and um, we've got everything listed 90 days out, um, or give us a call. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can get those classes, make it easy for you to find. If you're in the Houston area, stop by and see them. Thanks, Shay. Thank you.
Big shout out to Houston North Store here that we come to today, showing us all these cool tricks to make better hand cut dovetails. If you're in the area, stop by and check them out and say hello. Tell them 731 sent you. If you like this video, click that box right there. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. It's one of my favorite videos. Also another one of my favorite right there.